Why an earthquake movie? Hmm. Good question. Um, well, when you read a script as a director, first of all, uh, I, I need material that excites me visually. So you can read it and just go, this would be awesome to shoot, this would be fun, this would look cool. So the script had that right away. But that's not why you make a movie. So the fact that there was a big disaster or multiple disasters was intriguing and got me through the script. But actually what really attracted me to finally say, yeah, I want to make the movie was the story of this family trying to reunite. The fact that they were a family falling apart, that the lead character, uh, Ray Gaines, who Dwayne Johnson plays, was a, was a hero, but he had gone through a trauma in his past, that uh, he was a blue collar guy, he was someone I'd never seen Dwayne play, um, and, and that this guy was gonna try to have to save his family. The heart of that, the, the, the core of that story, that's what actually got me to say yes to the movie. I grew up in the 90s and I grew up on people like Steven Spielberg and James Cameron, and no matter how big their movies got, you always felt like you knew those characters and you were following those characters. And my argument is always with spectacle and you know, scale and all that stuff and big action set pieces is that like, they're very entertaining, but if you really want them to resonate, you need to care about the people inside of the events. Have you ever experienced a, 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 an actual earthquake or maybe a disaster? Uh, I, well, I'm from Canada, so a natural disaster for us is a blizzard. Um, <laughs> Though my house has been entirely snowed under once, and we had to dig our way out, but that was, you know, that's not as bad as an earthquake, obviously. Um, I've experienced little tiny earthquakes in California, very small ones, and they're, they're at that point where you're sitting in a room and it just kind of shifts around, and it, at first you actually don't know what's happening. You kind of think like, oh, I'm tired or something. And then you see your picture frames moving and you're like, okay, that was an earthquake, but it's nothing scary, it was just more kind of strange. Um, for the movie, we researched every aspect of the film, from the seismologist, um, you know, Dr. Lawrence Hayes, Paul Giamatti's character, all his lingo, equipment, all of his gear, all of that was researched to the point where it all changed a week before we did his scenes and had to rewrite all his scenes to, to make the, all the dialogue correct. And then in terms of the, the visual presentation of an earthquake and a tsunami, we looked at every piece of footage we could find, stills, Every single visual effect shot in the movie actually had a file reference. Wow. So if a shot came up and I didn't like it, I could say, bring up the corresponding shot number, and they'd bring up a file, and they'd open it, and I'd say, oh, okay, I see where they're going wrong. I don't like this, I like this, I don't oh, like that. So you could go back, you could constantly, what it was doing, it was keeping me, it was keeping the visual effects, it was keeping the art department honest in the design. Because I didn't want it to feel silly. I wanted it to be grounded in something. So if a brick building fell down, we had footage of a brick building falling down. If it, if, it was a, if it was a wood building collapsing, we'd have footage of a wood building wow. collapsing, so it was referenced. Um, yeah. Speaking of shots, uh, can you tell us about you know, that one special shot? I'm not talking about a favorite, maybe, maybe the shot that took you the longest to prepare? Or? The, the single shot that you're talking about is the, the five minute shot that chases Carla's character through a restaurant that's at the top floor of a high rise um, as the building's collapsing. Um, that set is a massive set and everything in the set shook in order to kind of build the, the, the vibe to put. I always wanted to shoot as much in camera as I could. I almost wanted to put the actors inside of the event so they could really feel it. And when you see that fireball go off, when you see the glass breaking and the, sh the chandeliers collapsing, that's all there, that's all really on the set. That single shot took two months to prepare in Australia, it took me two months to design in Los Angeles. Then it took me two days for the stunt team to prepare with my cameraman, and then it took me two days to shoot it. And then it took me three months to post it. So that single shot alone was probably about seven months of work. A five minute single shot, no cutting. Um, and it, it really does what I wanted the movie to do, which is to put you inside the event, to make you experience it, and, and, and in a less Hollywood way because there's no cutting. So it just doesn't let you off the hook. It's literally putting the audience in it and saying, you're on the ride now, good luck. Hold on tight. <laughs>